Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Wa usallimu wa usallimu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsani ila yawmid din wa ba'd. A'udhu billahi minash shaytani rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم آمين يا رب العالمين ما رسبت برادس السيستس إن إسلام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته all praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is our creator, who is our nourisher, who is our sustainer, who is the provider, who, one, who is the one who gives illness and sickness, and the one who gives cure from any sickness and illness. Allah Rabbul Izzat is in control of our lives, and all praise be to Him, for Him is the one that we turn towards during easiness and hardship and we pray to him salutations and durood be on the prophet muhammad peace be upon him sallallahu alayhi wasallam upon his blessed family and upon his companion salawatullahi alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in welcome to a session in which inshallah ta'ala we have title it as a profitable Ramadan inshallah ta'ala mashallah alhamdulillah this weekend and the next few days mashallah as we are aware that many scholars around the globe many organization around the world many masajids many imams are mashallah holding um, Ramadan workshops and preparation for Ramadan sem seminars and webinars May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all those inshallah ta'ala and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant uh, every organization and every scholar uh, who is trying to engage the Muslim community during this unprecedented time, unprecedented time uh, the ability to fulfill the duties and to send the correct message out for the community and may Allah accept the effort and increase in the knowledge and deen in the taqwa and piety. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the hard work. Amin ya rabbal alameen. So viewers from around the world, Jazakallahu khairan for joining us. And we appreciate your time that you have taken just specifically uh, to listen to us inshallah ta'ala to some spiritual talks and some reminders in regards to Ramadan and how we should be uh, making sure that our Ramadan is a profitable Ramadan inshallah ta'ala. However, I want to concentrate my lecture and our discourse today uh, from the passage of the Quran which we have heard this many times in our lives and not only many times in our lives but I'm sure that Many ulama, many scholars around the world have already spoken about these topics. However, this is a reminder for myself, first of all, and all of us around the world to understand the spirituality of Ramadan and to make sure that the Ramadan that we are going to be spending this year is a different Ramadan from the previous years of our lives, inshallah ta'ala. Obviously, before we just go into explaining things, for some of us, it's going to be a totally different Ramadan due to COVID-19 or coronavirus. And for some of us, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. The Ramadan will be the same. Nevertheless, if it's the same, we have a different Ramadan. What is the Quran uh, explains or how the Quran uh, paints a picture of what is necessarily to make a profit of a Ramadan. This is something very important that we understand this, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And it's something that we, inshallah ta'ala, try to engage as much as we can. So this Ramadan becomes a profitable Ramadan for us, inshallah ta'ala. 
before we even proceed forward and explain what we are required to do, whatever happens or whatever is happening around the world, be it with COVID-19 or coronavirus or anything that is happening around the world, I would like to remind myself and you brothers and sisters and viewers from around the world that this is all in the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is all in the wisdom of Allah Rabbul Izzah. And this is all in the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We've got to understand that the hikmah of Allah is something that we as human cannot comprehend and is difficult for us to comprehend the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, it's vital, it's very important that we do not use our intellect and we do not use our degrees to try to comprehend the hikmah and the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, we are submitting to the hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying what the Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een will often say and say, Sami'na wa ata'na, we have heard and we will obey. Just a reminder of the hikmah of Allah Rabbul Izzah. When we introspect, we examine, uh, we explore, we study and we educate ourselves uh, from the Quranic perspective and we look into one of the most intriguing, uh, eloquent, fascinating and soothing and beautiful incident or story in the Quran, which is the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam, we come to know that even before Allah Rabbul Izzah goes into the details about the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam and explain in a very eloquent and beautiful manner the story of Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam, Allah Rabbul Izzah is already saying to us, Inna Rabbaka Alimun Hakim, Inna Rabbaka Alimun Hakim. He said, remember indeed your Lord, your Lord, indeed your Allah is the all-knowing and the most wise. Which means that even before we can put questions in our, into our mind and start interrogating and engaging ourselves at looking at the negativity of the incident of Yusuf alayhi salatu wassalam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in very eloquent way. He's already addressing the issue in Rabbaka Alimun Hakim that your Lord, your Allah, your Creator, He's the all knowing and He's the most wise. Yes, He's the most wise. So when we understand this sifa and quality and attribute of Allah Rabbul Izza, which is Al Hakim, then Whatever comes our way, my brothers and sisters in Islam, whatever comes our way, be it is a good thing or be it is a negative, a positive thing or negative, be it is in the form of a disease or a form of a trial, always we will turn towards the quality and the attributes and the sifa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is in the hikmah of Allah. He is Al-Hakim, He is the most wise and it's up to him to decide whatever he wants to do. Once we understand this, inshallah ta'ala, my brothers and sisters, our Ramadan will be a profitable Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. So let's look what the Quran says about Ramadan. It's very important that we understand this concept. So I would like all of us, inshallah ta'ala, all the brothers and sisters and the viewers and listening from around the world to um, engage with myself and to engage with me during this time, uh, in the, with the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, the verses of Surah Al-Baqarah in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about fasting our Ramadan. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking how important is Ramadan. So people do ask these questions and as a, as a scholar of deen or as a student of deen, as we say, and a person who is trying to learn deen on a daily basis, um, the community tend to ask this question that what is required from us in Ramadan? What do we need to do in Ramadan? So very briefly, the Quran describes this. The Quran actually gives us a guidelines. The Quran is giving us a description 
and is giving us some guidelines of what we need to do during Ramadan. Be it is in isolation, be it is in lockdown, or be it if we are not on lockdown or isolation or self distancing, the Quran all all uh, the Quran gives us those four main guidelines that me and you should be adopting to make the Ramadan a profitable Ramadan, a very profitable Ramadan in which inshallah ta'ala before the hilal and before the moon of shawal is sighted allah rabbul izzat can make us amongst those that he will free from the fire of jahannam ameen inshallah ta'ala and grant us a place in jannah inshallah ta'ala so the first thing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the quran about making ramadan profitable which is a very uh, important aspect of our deen and is one of the main pillars of our deen and is one of the main pillars of Islam is fasting. Yeah, it's fasting during the 28, 29 days or 30 days of Ramadan. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usiyamu kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. So this is the first guidelines. Obviously, Ramadan is associated with fasting. However, that's how we are linking. This is how we are affiliating. This is how we are associating Ramadan with fasting. But let's, let's look at the historical background, very briefly, historical background of Ramadan. If we historically introspect and study Ramadan, we will all come to know that fasting was not prescribed or Psalm or Ramadan was not prescribed as a compulsory month in Makkah al Mukarramah. It actually happened in Medina al Munawwara. And also it happened after a time when the Sahaba and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had migrated to Medina al Munawwara. So it wasn't even during the early times or the early months of migration, it was after uh, after a certain period of time. Some scholars say 18 months, some scholars say two years. So there, there was a gap of between one to two years. So what is the hikmah and why was it Ramadan not prescribed in Makkah al-Mukarramah? First of all, historically. So looking at the concept of it, we, from the Sira perspective, and studying Sirah, we come to know that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala on Ajma'een in Makkah al and even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Makkah al they were facing many atrocity and trials. We all know that the Mushikins of Makkah and the pagans of Makkah did not leave any stone unturned uh, for troubling the Muslims at that time. And not only troubling the Muslims at that time, but atrocity and torture was to the highest level. To the extent that some Sahabas uh, and some companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during their life in Makkah al Mukarramah, they never even had meal, food, nourishment for many days. Days will go uh, hours will pass, nights will pass, sometimes two, three days will go, and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala will not have anything to eat. They will not have anything to fill the stomach. And we know that they face many struggles in their life. And especially during the early parts of Islam in Makkah al Mukarramah. So for them to stay hungry, for them to stay away from food and drink was a norm, was normal. It was a, nothing new, it was normal. So when somebody is not eating, when somebody is not drinking, and it's a norm in their life, it has become a habit that they can go on for days without food and drink. And then we tell that individual that stop eating, stop drinking, it doesn't make sense. That individual can say to me and you, the Sheikh, what are you talking about? Stop eating, stop drinking. I haven't been eating or drinking for many days. It has become my habit. 
And this is what actually happens when a habit kicks in and when somebody is in that habit that they do not drink or they do not eat for many days, I, you know, to stop them from eating and drinking is become a norm. So they would not take that as a, as a serious thing because it's a norm, it's a normal thing in their daily life and they can go on for many days without eating and drinking. But when the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Jama'een migrated to Medina to Munawwara, and as we know from the Sira concept and perspective of the Sira after studying Sira, that those who migrated from Mecca to Medina were called the Muhajir, yeah, the migrants. And those who were living in Medina to Munawwara were given the title of Ansar, the helpers. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam created this brotherhood and sisterhood relationship between the people of Mecca and the people of Medina. And that's how deen spread. So the Muhajir and the Ansar became brothers and sisters. And this relationship or this link that Allah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam created between uh, two different communities became so strong that it was very difficult to part them away. It was very difficult to separate them. So as we know then, as the Meccan Sahaba, the Sahabas who migrated from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah, the Muhajirs, when they migrated to Medina to Al-Munawwara, they migrated with very little provision. Some of them left the whole stock and provision and belongings in Mecca to Al-Mukarramah because they did not have the facility that me and you have nowadays in terms of removal. Uh, you know, we can hire a van, we can hire a removal company, and if we want to migrate uh, or, or, or shift ourselves from one town to another town or one city to another city or within the city, uh, it is quite daunting, it is quite difficult. It's not an easy task, but it's much easier from the time of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala so once this uh, migration has taken place and the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala jama'een from Mecca to Al-Mukarramah has settled in Medina to Al-Munawwara and many of them then started having uh, financial stability. Some of them started having trading uh, businesses. Some of, that, some of them started helping the Ansar brothers uh, in the market, in the bazaar, in the souk, in the trading or in the gardens, in the orchards, in agriculture etc and they started having some share and obviously the financial stability started becoming much more apparent and the sahaba were much more settled with financially in terms that there was food there was nourishment there was provision at home maybe not twice a day like me and you have or maybe once a day at least they will be they, they were able to feed themselves after a period of time in which they find it found difficult in makkah al-mukarramah so now in Medina to Munawwara, all that has shifted and Allah has opened the doors of His Rahman mercy for the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala jama'een. That's when it became a bit difficult and that is when it's difficult and that's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then prescribed the fasting of Ramadan for 29 days or 30 days compulsory. Now, somebody is eating twice a day, somebody is eating probably one meal a day or two meal a day. Me and you, alhamdulillah, we eat three meals a day or sometimes even four meals a day. Now when we tell somebody who's been has got eating for 11 months and somebody has been eating for 11 months continuously two meals a day or three meals a day and we tell them stop eating because it's the hukam and the command of Allah and Allah has prescribed that that is when our nafs yeah that is when our desire gets crushed. And that's what is required, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Yeah. Our nafs, our desire to be crushed. So we become obedient to our Lord. We don't become obedient to our desires. Yeah. We don't become obedient to our desires. 11 months we become obedient to our desires. 11 months we become obedient to the kitchen, uh, to the dastarkhan, to the table, by eating whatever was presented for us, to the extent that we have made our mothers, our sisters, our spouses, uh, servants of the kitchen for 11 months. Let's give them one month to be servant of Allah, at least my brothers and sisters. Yeah, For brothers who are listening, at least give a break to your mothers and sisters and spouses 
uh, for one month to be servant of Allah in the month of Ramadan, not to be servant of the kitchen. But however, unfortunately, this has changed. In Ramadan, our mothers get all the instruction, or our sisters or spouses get all the instruction to cook so many different dishes. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this is incorrect. This is incorrect. 11 months that mother, 11 months that sister, that spouse, that, that wife of ours, uh, they were given us food on the table by the by, 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 by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now let's give them one month by saying, mom, uh, sister, wife, you know, one month at least. Don't worry about Ramadan, I'm cooking so many dishes. At least become a person of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At least try to build your link with Allah Rabbul Izzah, inshallah ta'ala. So then Ramadan became compulsory Madina to Munawara. Now, when Ramadan became compulsory Madina to Munawara, there were some Sahabas, the majority of the Sahaba, not some of them, the majority of the Sahaba found it very difficult then, obviously, to control. And as we know, it's difficult to control ourselves when for 11 months we've been eating whatever we've been eating. Yes, for 11 months we've been drinking whatever we've been drinking. Now, one month to control our habits, this is actually a training program by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a lot of hikmah in it. I can go on and on, but I don't want to make it too long. It's like a hikmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the majority of the disease that we face is because of our stomach, our belly. And we just eat whatever we want to eat. We drink whatever we want to drink. Allah is trying to control our habits. Yeah. To control, to make sure that we have a healthy diet. In Ramadan, we should be having a healthy diet because the opposite, unfortunately. It becomes an unhealthy diet. We're eating warm food. And drinking cold drink also, this is unhealthy for the body. And there's many other unhealthy uh, things that we do in Ramadan, which should be the opposite. Ramadan should be a training program to control our desires, our nerves, our health, uh, our eating disorders, and whatever our nerves and desires want to have in terms of food, that should be controlling Ramadan. So the first thing, the first important thing that my brothers and sisters we should be doing is fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for 29 days to 30 days. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is in the Quran, the first verse which I want to speak to you brothers and sisters in Islam, which is verse number 183, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to me and you about fasting. Now, as I say, it could be daunting, it's a daunting task to fast for 29 days or to abstain ourselves from food and drink and relationship with our spouses is a daunting task for one whole month. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even before when He prescribes the fasting of the month of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to me and you, my brothers and sisters in Islam, that this fasting, Rosa, Psalm, was also prescribed for the previous nations. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الصِّيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ In previous nation, we're fasting also. So it's nothing new. So it's not something like, I want you, I want to, uh, I want you to kill yourself, Allah is saying, or I want you to become dehydrated, or I want to oppress you. No, 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 Allah is not saying that. And that's, that's the beauty when it comes, when we surrender to Allah, that any of the commands that Allah gives me and you, we will say, Samirna wa ata'na. Allah, we have heard it, we have obeyed it, we obey to it, and we stick to it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is saying to me and you, brothers in Islam and sisters in Islam, Allah Rabbul Izzat is saying that this fasting, this roza, this psalm, and this abstaining from food and drink, and with uh, staying from physical contact with your spouses, it's not something that is new, it was done by previous nations also. So don't be, uh, don't be disheartened. Um, don't think that Allah is sending oppression towards you. Don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to oppress you and it's because Allah hates you. No, 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 no at all, not at all. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then the benefit of fasting is la'allakum tattaqun. La'allakum tattaqun. So by fasting, controlling your desires, abstaining from those things that were halal before Ramadan, they have become haram now in Ramadan while you are fasting, obviously. 
So eating was halal, drinking was halal, uh, physical contact with spouses was halal. Now because of Ramadan, all those halal aspects became haram. Allah says, when you will prevent yourself by doing the halal or by abstaining from the halal in Ramadan and making those halal as mean of haram now in Ramadan, then you will build a quality of taqwa. Slowly, slowly, that training will give you the aim of taqwa. Slowly, slowly, that uh, training will give you the achievement of reaching your milestone of taqwa. And taqwa means God consciousness, to have the God consciousness quality in our life. And what does that mean, God consciousness quality? Does that mean that we perform so many salah? This is another myth and misunderstanding that me and you we have, unfortunately, and society and community at large. Somebody might think, oh, uh, this individual, this brother or sister, mashallah, they are performing so many nawafil salah, uh, so many optional salah, uh, they, they have taqwa. Yeah, or, or this person, mashallah, has got big beard and mashallah, niqab and hijab and everything and abaya and look at his clothing, mashallah, thobe, this person has got taqwa. Or, or this person, mashallah, is reading a lot, reading a lot of Quran, mashallah, this person has got taqwa. Remember, my brothers and my sisters in Islam, taqwa is not the name of ibadah. Yes, ibadah, worships, ibadah will take us towards the level of taqwa. However, taqwa is not the name of performing so much or so many ibadah or exceeding ibadah. Taqwa is a sifa, it's a quality that needs to be internalized inside us. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in the, in the hadith, At-taqwa ha-huna, at-taqwa ha-huna, piety, taqwa, God consciousness is in the heart, it's not appearing. Yeah? Your dress does not de define that we have taqwa. Our appearance does not define that we have taqwa. Our ibadah does not define that we have taqwa. Today, unfortunately, we think that somebody has performed so much salah or reading so much Quran and is engaged in so much dhikr. This person is a muttaqi and has got the God consciousness quality of taqwa. This is totally incorrect because taqwa is not the name of ibadah. Taqwa is the name of a sifa, of an attribute that needs to be worked. Needs to be worked slowly, slowly. A person works into that. Which means, what kind of quality? That quality that be it, we in isolation. Be it, we in isolation. Nobody's watching us. Nobody's looking us. Still, we are protecting ourselves. Still, we're not cheating with Allah. Still, we're not doing anything haram. Still, our www dot is not going to the wrong page. Still, our WhatsApp is not going to the wrong page. Still, our Facebook is not going to the wrong site. Still, our Twitter is not tweeting the wrong information to somebody or someone. This is called taqwa. Now we are in isolation. Shaitan is bringing many different um, items into our head that, you know, you're in isolation. Nobody's watching you. You're working from home. Uh, your spouses or your family members are downstairs. They don't know what's going on. Just, just quickly watch something or do something or just quickly send this and you know, nobody will know. No, 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 no. That is what taqwa comes, my brothers and sisters. That is what taqwa comes. That even during isolation, even during self-distancing, even during lockdown, even during at home, we are conscious that Allah is watching me. Allah is seeing me. Wallahi subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You know, uh, one example, one analogy, um, obviously nowadays, uh, well, re recently, just currently, it's very difficult to drive also because we all on a lockdown in different parts of the world, people are in different lockdowns and isolation. However, when we drive and there's a camera, a speed camera waiting there and says 30 miles, yeah, and we are scared, conscious that, you know, I don't want to uh, speed more than 30, otherwise, I'll be flashed and a beautiful letter will come towards my doorstep and I will have to pay a fine. So we are scared. We are conscious of this uh, camera. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters in Islam, if we will have the same quality of being conscious of Allah, as much as we have for that speed camera, as much scared we are of that speed camera to flash onto our number plate, 
as much scared we are that the police, the cop might call me the sirens flashing and sounding to catch us because we are driving 100 miles per hour on a road, if we would have 75% of that consciousness towards Allah during socializing or isolation, either with friends or either we're in lockdown, Wallahi, majority of our issue would be resolved. Majority of our issue would be resolved. This is very, very strong. Listen, very strong. Unfortunately, today we have more consciousness and awareness of the material penalty that we're going to be facing, but we don't have the awareness or the consciousness of the penalty that we'll be con uh, facing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not careful of the boundaries of Islam that we are breaking, but we are being more careful of the boundaries and the law of the land that we are breaking. And this is something that we need to work uh, ourselves for. This is something that we need to internalize in our lives that taqwa needs to be worked into. So this is the first important thing to make our Ramadan profitable. Now, obviously, in different parts of the world, the masajids have been restricted. Ramadan is not linked with masajids. Remember this. Ramadan is not linked with masajids. Ramadan is not linked with the Umrah. Ramadan is not linked by performing salah in the masjid. Ramadan is not by doing iftar in the masjid. No, no, no. Ramadan is a link that is between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ramadan is a link that you should have between yourself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'm telling you this because our predecessors, our aslaf, our ulama, our scholars, they will make that Ramadan a specific, profitable, exclusive Ramadan. And they will try to go in isolation in Ramadan rather than socializing in Ramadan. Because Ramadan is the month of isolation between yourself and Allah Rabbul Izzah. And this will be happening in Ramadan. So it's very important that we start practicing this. So people think, oh, the masjids are locked. The masjid has been restricted. Uh, there is no, you know, there's no, uh, there's no iftar taking place in the masjid. There will be no taraweeh or jama'at salah in, in, in the masjid. My brothers and my sisters in Islam, Ramadan is not linked to the masajids. Ramadan is not linked to iftar in the masajid. Ramadan is not linked to Umrah at all. Our Aslam, as I mentioned, in Ramadan, they will isolate themselves more, more than in other months because they will like to build a spiritual relationship with Allah in Ramadan. So subhanAllah, Allah has given us a Ramadan with isolation, which is going to be coming to our doorstep in a few days. So let's take advantage of that. Let's seize the opportunity. Let's follow the footsteps of the Ashab and the companions of the Prophet ﷺ and also Aslaf, that they will maximize the opportunity, the time they will give in isolation Ramadan to build a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first thing is fasting. That's the first ingredient, the first guideline the Quran has given us that what we should be doing to make this Ramadan a profitable Ramadan. The second thing, and the second most important thing that we should be doing, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks in verse number 185, is The citation of the Qur'an. The citation of the Qur'an. The Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. The Quran was revealed in the month of Ramadan. And in the Quran, there is no way anywhere in the Quran besides this place in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 185, in which Allah has linked Ramadan with Quran. Allah did not link Psalm with Ramadan, but Allah has linked Quran with Ramadan. Which means that now during this COVID-19 or during this unprecedented time that the world and the Ummah is facing, we have the ability, if we haven't done it for years, my brothers and sisters in Islam, to at least engage with the Quran and recite the Quran. Subhanallah, Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful opportunity Allah has given us. Let me tell you about Imam Shafi'i. 
the great scholar Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i rahimullah ta'ala. A great scholar of his time. You know how great he was out of, the, out of our great imams, the four great imams, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad, Imam Shafi'i rahimullah ta'ala. He was one of the great imams. It is said at a tender age of seven, he was a Hafiz al-Qur'an. At a tender age of seven, he was a Hafiz al-Qur'an. And at a tender age of nine, he had memorized the Muwatta of Imam Malik. Yeah, the Muwatta of Imam Malik, the book of Hadith or Imam Malik has written, has compiled, his student compiled. This was even before Bukhari, Sahih al-Bukhari. People think that Sahih al-Bukhari was the first book of Hadith. No, it's incorrect. Imam Malik's book of Hadith, al muwatta was the first ever compiled book of Hadith. And Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala had memorized that at the tender age of 9 to 10. And it's not something small like this. It's quite thick. You know, we studied it, alhamdulillah. And it's got many thousand ahadith. Imam Shafi'i at the tender age of 16, 17, he was the great mufti of his time. Yeah, he was given fatwas. Islamic jurisprudence rulings. It is come that when Ramadan will come, Ramadan will come. Now he's a great Imam, yeah? He's a great Imam of his time, of his era, a giant, gigantic figure, and a person who with a lot of capability and a lot of quality of mashallah, people will look up to him for any kind of issues in regards to hadith or fiqh or tafsir. But when the month of Ramadan will come, it is said that Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah ta'ala in Sifat al Safa is mentioned this, that he will complete one Qur'an per day. One Qur'an per day. He will complete one Qur'an recitation per day. He's a great Imam of his time. Yes, he's not a normal person, remember. He's got the, show, uh, the, the, the responsibility of the ummah on his shoulder. Because the great imam, he's giving fatwa, Islamic ruling, jurisprudence. But he will say that this is the month of Allah. This is the month of the Quran. Everything can wait. But the Quran is my priority in the month of Ramadan. When I was reading this, when I was reading this, I lost myself many years ago when I was reading this. I lost myself in the thought of this, that how would this even possible? How was this even possible to complete one Quran per day? How, how this is even possible? And I lost, I lost myself into this thought and I tried to put myself into the past and go back to Imam Shafi Rahmatullah his time. And Wallahi, my brothers, you know, people say Baraka. Yeah, Baraka on time. These were the people who had Baraka on time. Today, we don't have Baraka on time. And let me tell you why, the reason to this. When I started thinking why, why it was so easy for them to perform, to recite one full Quran per day, and why we struggle even to do one juice per day. Wallahi, we, uh, sorry, one juice per day, yes. Why we struggle to do one juice per day and complete the Quran in the month of Ramadan. The reason to that, they had so much barakah in the time because the full life or the full day or the whole day or the whole life was just for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They dedicated the time for Sharia. They dedicated the time for Allah. They dedicated the time to please Allah, not to please the creation. They dedicated the time for spiritual reformation. They dedicated the time for the Akhirah and the lockdown of the Kabr. Yeah, no, the lockdown of the house. They prepared their life for the exit strategy of this dunya, not the exit strategy that labor wants. Yeah, the government wants an exit strategy. They prepared and dedicated the time for the exit strategy of this dunya. That after this dunya, if I'm gone, what's my exit strategy? What's going to happen to my lockdown in the cover in the grave? They prepared for that life and they dedicated the time for that life. And because of that, Allah gave them so much barakah in their life, so much barakah in the time that it was easy for them to complete one Quran per day. It was easy. And Wallahi, at present time, I'm not lying, at present time, 
at present time. I know some of my teachers. Wallahi, I can say this. I know some of my teachers. And it's been approximately 16 years since I've graduated from my Alamiya or the Islamic education degree. 16 years. Up to now, I have some of my teachers in Ramadan, they will complete one Quran per day, Alhamdulillah. One whole Quran per day. And I will not exaggerate by saying this. Alhamdulillah, I've seen it, I've witnessed, I've witnessed it, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them so much barakah. Obviously, they're hafiz Quran, so they just recite the Quran, they just recite the Quran, they don't stop, it's non-stop. And this is the Quran, Allah says, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. This is in month in which the Quran was revealed. So my brothers and my sisters in Islam, this one illness, this one disease, coronavirus is a disease. But coronavirus disease is not as, as strong as the spiritual disease. Remember this, yes. Yeah. It's, not, it's not as life-threatening as the spiritual disease. Yeah. There's one disease in the Ummah. And some scholars even say this. And it baffles me that how can a scholar say this? And how can a scholar try to justify this? And even some brothers and sisters who are so-called learned brothers and sisters, na'udhu billah, they spread this message. Please, please, for God's sake, for Allah's sake, do not entertain those thoughts in your mind. Do not entertain those thoughts in your mind. So this one disease, people say, brother, sister, you don't understand the Quran, so what's the point of reading the Quran? Why are you even reading the Quran? Yeah, there's no point. You don't know what... Alif Lam means, or Dalik al Kitab la Raiba Fi means, or Alhamdulillah means, why are you even reading the Quran? You're not going to gain anything. Please, I appeal you to all those brothers and sisters watching and listening to me. Do not entertain these thoughts. This is Shaitan's plots. This is Shaitan's plan to take us away from that book that will save us in this world and in the Akhirah. This is the book of eternity success. Let me give you some examples. When Allah revealed the Quran on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we all know the first few verses of Surah Al-Alaq. Yeah, Surah Al-Alaq were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We all know this. And what the verse or the words that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my brothers and sisters. He said, Iqara, Iqara bismi rabbika alladhi khalaqa. He said, read. Now, Iqra means read, doesn't mean understand. Iqra doesn't mean understand. Iqra means read. Which means even though you don't understand what Allah is saying, read. It's so uh, by reading the Quran, inshallah, it will illuminate our heart and will remove the spiritual diseases or the diseases in our heart. Very important to understand this. Now, let me explain to you this from the Hadith perspective. The Prophet ﷺ has mentioned a hadith with the nearest meaning in the hadith. Mentioned in many books of hadith, but Imam Tirmidhi rahmahullah ta'ala has quoted this in his sunan. He said that the person, the Prophet ﷺ said with the nearest meaning, that when a person recites the Qur'an, recites the Qur'an, the Prophet ﷺ did not say who understands the Qur'an. He said, recites the Qur'an. Man qara'a, man qara'a al harf Whoever is signed one letter from the Quran will get 10 rewards. 10 rewards for one letter of the Quran. So then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam further on explained. And he said, لا أقول ألف لا من حرف I'm not saying to you that ألف لا ميم in the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah is one letter, uh, uh, one uh, one letter, yes. But rather, alif is a letter, lam is a letter, and meme is a letter. Therefore, you have gained 30 rewards. 30 rewards by just saying alif, lam, meme. So my brothers and my sisters, and those who are listening and viewing this video, my appeal, please do not fall into these thoughts. Do not entertain these thoughts that I don't understand the Quran. What's the point of reciting the Quran? No, 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 no. Please. Please. Remember the Arabic of the Quran is even beyond comprehension from those people who speak Arabic. Allah, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. The Arabic of the Quran is so eloquent 
that is even hard to understand for those people who speak Arabic language. And this is because it's a mu'jiz, it's a miracle, it's Allah's words. So obviously it's going to be different and distinguished from our speak, from our words, from our lecture, from our speech. This is Allah's word, so it has to be different, it has to be in a different level from the human speech. So do not entertain these thoughts, please. So the second thing, the second guideline that we should be doing is spending time in reciting the Quran in the month of Ramadan, my brothers and sisters in Islam. Please, please. And very, very quickly, I tell you how easy it is. How easy it is. Even if we do one juice, one juice per day, one separa per day, inshallah, we will complete the Quran before the month of Ramadan is completed. Alhamdulillah, look how Allah has made it easy. We have mobile apps. Open the mobile app. Open the Quran. Just read. That's five times daily salah. Five times daily salah. At Fajr, read some portion. At Dhuhr, read some portion. At Asr, read some portion. At Maghrib, read some portion. At Aisha, read some portion. And if you want to divide that with pages, depending on which copy or depending on which printing or which publishing of the Quran that we will take, if we take this and if we take the different mushaf, then I will say on an average, on an average, you will have to read five to six pages to finish one juice a day at each salah. So during Fajr, five to six pages, during Dhuhr, five to six pages, during Asr, five to six pages, Maghrib, five to six pages, and Aisha, five to six pages. Wallahi, if you follow this, you'll be completing the Quran. Inshallah, before the month of Ramadan is concluded. So the second thing to make the Ramadan profitable is the citation of the Quran as much as we can, as much as we can. And if we cannot recite due to some reasons, obviously, maybe we are not fluent in the recitation, maybe we haven't learned how to recite the Quran. If we cannot recite this, then obviously it will be very important that uh, we listen to it, Inshallah ta'ala. By listening to it, by listening to it, inshallah ta'ala will be very good for us, inshallah ta'ala. By listening to it, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it uh, easy for us uh, also to have the spirituality in our heart, in our mind, inshallah ta'ala, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And by listening to the Quran, inshallah, Allah Rabbul Izzat will grant us the tawfiq and ability, inshallah ta'ala, to introspect what the Quran has been said and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is trying to say. Uh, in the Quran, inshallah ta'ala. So, uh, another thing is to listen to the Quran. This is very important that we listen to the Quran, inshallah ta'ala. If we cannot read, if we cannot recite it due to some many reasons, then obviously just listen to it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then will open our chest, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open our heart, inshallah ta'ala, and then we will be able to uh, to understand the Quran, recite it in a, in a much more, um, in a daily basis, rather than just in Ramadan, inshallah ta'ala. So the second ingredient over here uh, to make the Ramadan profitable will be to recite the Quran, inshallah ta'ala. The third ingredient, which is mentioned in the Quran during that passage in Surah Al-Baqarah, so after these verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the third ingredient <clears throat> that me and you should have, and me and you should be adopting to make the Ramadan a profitable Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So this is verse number 186. Verse number 186 of Surah Al-Baqarah. So after a few verses, this is the third ingredient that we shall have to make Ramadan profitable. So what is this? It's dua. Supplication. Allah is talking about supplication, dua. Ramadan is the month in which your dua are accepted. Shaitan is already on a lockdown. We are on a lockdown also. So why not take time to make dua for ourselves, for our ummah, for our children, for our spouses, for our family, for our parents, for our life, for our success in this world in the akhirah. This is the month in which Allah accepts the dua of the slave. It is within the passage of of Ramadan, it is within the passage of the fasting of Ramadan, these verses. 
So this is the third ingredient that me and you should be having in Ramadan to make the Ramadan profitable, brothers and sisters in Islam. Dua. And the best time of Dua is just before the Iftar time, before the Maghrib time. However, unfortunately, we are so engrossed and engaged waiting for our food to be put on our table that we even forget to make Dua. And this is the time that we should be building our link and connection with Allah. During Tahajjud, Qiyamul Layl, is the time to perform Dua. And Allah Rabbul Izzad loves Dua. Allah says, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ when my slave asks you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in regards to me, tell them I am very near. Ujibu da'wat al-da'i idha da'an. I will accept the dua, the supplication, will they make the supplication? So my brothers and sisters in Islam, the whole world is going through a crisis. The whole world is going through an unprecedented time right now with COVID-19 and coronavirus. And in some countries, this is peaking higher and higher and higher. This is the time to turn to Allah and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brothers and sisters in Islam. This is a time when we should be returning to Allah. This is a time when we should be running towards Allah. There's no vaccination out there that will give us cure. Besides, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to give us cure. Even sitting at home without taking any medication, any vaccination, if we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will grant us remedy, cure, and inshallah ta'ala shifa, and grant us good health also. And we know that we need to make many duas. We know. We know that how much things we need in our life. Many people are in crisis, family problems, financial problems, children problems, issues at work, issues in this environment, issues at this environment, issues with this extended family. Dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's pray to Allah. That, ya Allah, I want to mend my connection with my family members. Please Allah, make it easy. Ya Allah, I'm struggling at work. Allah, make it easy. Give me the tawfiq and the ability to earn halal income. Ya Allah, I haven't prepared for my, for my death. Allah, give me the tawfiq to prepare for my death. Ya Allah, we in a Muslim is facing this unprecedented time. Take it away from us. So all this comes into duas, my brothers and sisters in Islam. We should bring dua in our daily life. But in Ramadan, we should exceed and excel and spend more time in dua. And again, very easy, very easy. You don't have to do anything extra. We perform Fajr Salah. We recited some Quran. Yeah, we recited some Quran. We perform Fajr Salah. We recited some Quran. Make dua. We, recite, we perform Salah to Dhuhr. We recited some Quran. Make dua now. A few minutes. We, recite, uh, we perform Salatul Asr, we recite some Quran, make dua. At Maghrib, the same thing, and the Isha, the same thing. Our teacher, my teacher, will give me this example when I was studying back 20, 25 years ago. And I would like to share this example. There was time in my life when I was a child and I was learning the Quran. And sometimes the memorization of the Quran was very difficult. The passage were very difficult. And... I could not recall sometimes uh, what I had memorized. So we call it the muraja'a, the door. And sometimes I will be very stressed that what's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, the teacher will be very cross with me and he will not be happy. And this was a concern for us. You know, we were, we were concerned not to upset our teachers. Nowadays, obviously, children grow in a different environment and mahol. But for us, it was a, a, a very a concerning thing that we, I don't want to... Uh, upset my teacher tomorrow because I, I cannot uh, memorize what I have memorized. I cannot recall it. It's a bit weak. So there was one time I was like this and uh, finding it a bit difficult. Obviously, shaitan comes at many times to take us away from memorization of the Quran and uh, seeking the sacred knowledge. So um, one day I just went to see my spiritual father, my spiritual teacher. Um, his name is Hafiz Rashid. Um, uh, grant him um, success in this world, elevate his status, inshallah. He's done a lot for me when, during my study time. Um, he, he's in Jisbury, uh, as that's where, when I did all my education. And Hafiz Rashid, obviously he's seen me. Uh, I went to see him and I, 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 you know, I, I just, from my heart, I just pour my heart out to him. And he said something to me about, very beautiful, about, about dua memorization. And he said to me that, who is giving you the ability and the tawfiq and opportunity to learn the Quran? 
I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, then why don't you ask Allah to make the Quran as easy to be memorized uh, for you uh, during this time and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then he, made, he gave me an example. So he gave me an example and he said, look, if you ask me for a pound every day, five days, five days, five times a day. So you come to me and say to me, obviously one pound at that time was quite a lot. Nowadays one pound is minimum. But at that time I'm talking a good many, many decades ago, one pound was very valuable. So he will say, you know, if you come to me five times daily, five times daily, uh, give me a pound, give me a pound, give me a pound, give me a pound. And you, I do not give you a pound for 30 days, okay? But then you persist on that for two months, 60 days. Maybe I will not give it to you. But you persist that for 90 days, in three months. Then he says, one day I will become sick and tired of you coming to me and saying to you, here, take your pound and just do whatever you want to do. And so this is exactly with Allah. We're not ordering Allah to do something for us. But then Allah will say, okay, my slave, you've been coming five times a day for 30 days in the month of Ramadan. Here you go. I'm going to accept your dua. I'm going to accept your dua. I'm going to grant you whatever you want, what you want. And Allah does that. Allah does that. But we just got to internalize and we just got to rely and have tawakkul and rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and put our trust in Allah. Because remember dua, again, uh, some people unfortunately uh, misinterpret dua. They think dua is an order we place online and boom, Allah will deliver the next day or the next hour. No, that is un incorrect. Dua is not an order that we've given to Allah, my brothers and sisters in Islam. So remember this. Dua is your communication with Allah and give yourself a lot of credit and give a lot of show gratefulness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and, and be very thankful that Allah has given us even the opportunity to ask Him and lift our hands in front of Him. Yes. So be it Allah give it to us or does not give it to us. Itself, dua is a great honor to be knocking on the doors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي سَأَلَنِي فَلَمْ أُعْطِيَ لَهُ مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي قَرَى عَلَى بَابِ فَلَمْ أَفْتَحْ لَهُ Allah says in Hadith Al-Qudsi, who is there who will come and ask me and I will not grant him? Who will be there that will come and knock on my door? I will not open the door for them. So find ourselves be very grateful and honored that Allah has given us this ability and topic and opportunity that we are asking from him, from his treasure. And remember, nothing this decrease in the treasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the third uh, ingredient that we should be adopting and bringing to our life in Ramadan to make the Ramadan a profitable Ramadan is to make dua. And the last one the Quran says, which will be, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, can be, inshallah ta'ala, practice very good whilst we are in a lockdown isolation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about i'tikaf. Yeah, i'tikaf. Mashallah. Obviously, i'tikaf in the masjid. People do i'tikaf in the masjid. However, to do i'tikaf is not necessarily we do i'tikaf in the masjid. You know, the uh, the, the, the wives and our mothers, um, uh, our believers, the mothers of the believers and the wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they will perform a'atikaf at home. So you can do a'atikaf at home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this in verse number 187. And then he said, تِلْكَ حُدُودُ اللَّهِ فَلَا تَقْرَبُوهَا That you perform a'atikaf in the masajid. Now masajid, can be taken into uh, into two different uh, meanings and i'tikaf can be taken into two different contexts over here uh, performing either in a masajid in the masjid which is the house of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or in the place that we are performing salah in the place that we are performing salah also can be taken to this context also of i'tikaf inshallah ta'ala so the the fourth ingredient to make our ramadan a profitable ramadan is to perform a'tikaf in the masjid or perform a'tikaf at home now because we're in isolation and this is the fourth uh, this is a, a, this is one of the greatest uh, and fourth greatest um, ingredient to make our ramadan profitable however my brothers and sisters in islam we're going to be doing a'tikaf but i'm just going to request one a'tikaf that we all need to do to not to kill the spirituality of ramadan will all of you do it inshallah if only you can promise me, I will say, tell you. If only you brothers and sisters listening and viewing this, if you can promise me that inshallah you're going to try, I will tell you which etakaf you need to do.
Even during, you cannot go to the masjid to perform atikaf. There's one atikaf that me and you need to do in Ramadan. And you know which one is that? There's few of them, but the main one I'm going to talk about. Abstaining, abstaining from social media. Let not social media kill your time, please. Let not the Facebook kill your time, unless if it's a beneficial speech, unless if it's a beneficial thing, unless it's something that we are gaining knowledge, or we are enrolled in a course, or we are enrolled in a, in a webinar, or in a, in a halaqa, that is a different thing. But besides that, do not waste time on social media. So basically, I'm saying, say that try to minimize the use of social media on your mobile phone in Ramadan. It's killing everyone's time. It's killing everyone's time. This is the greatest etiquette. If we can put our mobile phone for 10 hours away in Ramadan, obviously, as I mentioned, if there's a halaqa, if there's a lecture, if there's some Quran classes and courses going, that is a different scenario. But besides, besides that, anything else that can uh, kill off our time and waste our time, please keep that out. This is the greatest artikaf. Wa antum aakifun, you are doing artikaf, you are isolating, and we're going to isolate ourselves from this kind of things, my brothers and sisters in Islam. It's very important that we understand this concept. The mobile phone is killing everyone's time, everyone's time. And not only that, this kind of communication means then from one topic goes to another topic from another topic goes to another topic like for example people are sending fake news and then we are spreading a fake news so number one we are spreading fake news we're lying that itself is a sin then it goes into griba backbiting that itself is a sin then it goes into slandering that itself is a sin and there is many other uh, negativities or many other uh, diseases like this that can kill our spirituality, my brothers and sisters in Islam. So I've, we've titled this uh, seminar as Profitable Ramadan. I've given you four ingredients. Yeah, remember a dish, yeah, when our mothers and sisters and our spouses are cooking a dish, the different specific ingredients we need to make that food tasty. Yeah, not just the onions, yeah, not just the masala and the paprika or the coriander, etc. There are some specific aroma, a specific, sorry, some specific ingredients to give that curry or that dish an aroma, a taste. Same with our Ramadan, to make that Ramadan a spiritual one, a beneficial one. And so that beautiful aroma uh, comes out from our life and we reform ourselves in these 30 days, 29 days. These ingredients are vital. I'm giving you this ingredient from the Quranic perspective. So number one, fast. Keep your rules and your fasting and so on throughout the month of Ramadan, 29 days, 30 days, taking into consideration all the do's and all the don'ts. Yeah, all the do's and all the don'ts. Number three, number two, uh, recitation of the Holy Quran on a daily basis. If we cannot recite the Quran on a daily basis, especially if you're our sisters, uh, due to the issue of the cycles that goes around monthly days, uh, then listen to the Quran. Listen to the Quran. But brothers, please recite the Quran. And as much as we can, let's make this environment of reciting the Quran as a group environment at home. Uh, uh, number three, dua, group dua. You know, make turn. One day, one person makes dua, the rest of the family says Amin. Then the children make dua, the rest of the family make uh, say Amin. Subhanallah, what a beautiful environment, mahal and atmosphere will be created at home. That's the third ingredient, dua. And the last ingredient to make a we will be already be in isolation. Atikaf means to be in isolation, to be in seclusion. We are already on lockdown, isolation, seclusion. And let's make this a spiritual seclusion, a spiritual isolation. Many people per perform or do atikaf in the masjid. Alhamdulillah, they're performing a sunnah. However, even performing atikaf in the masjid, things that they were not supposed to be doing because they kill the spirituality of atikaf, they're doing that and they don't benefit anything. We sustain away from all the issues at home, unfortunately. So now when we are here uh, at home, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we are doing a'atikaf, but let's make this a'atikaf a spiritual one. And the greatest success of all this, the greatest success of all this, because it's going to be daunting to stay at home, 
because many of us will go work uh, or, or the normal will you know will be at work or college or university the greatest success to achieve all this the greatest success especially when we are at home with family some of us unfortunately Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested them in different ways but when we are in a family home in which our children spouses brothers sisters mothers parents are living the greatest success to achieve all that is the control of your time the control of your time if you can achieve that for 29 days and 30 days that is the greatest training we have achieved because remember remember ramadan is not just staying hungry and thirsty it's also polishing reforming rectifying working on our akhlaq our characters our morals and the tongue yeah the tongue is the essence to all the morals if we can control that in this lockdown isolation of a'tikaf that we're doing at home for 29 days and 30 days we have achieved one of the greatest training in our lives inshallah ta'ala after doing all this after doing all this what benefit i'm going to get because we are humans isn't it so we we sometimes analogy our analogy is with the worldly analogy so in the dunya oh if i do this for 29 days i get this or i'll achieve this i'll achieve that or this is my milestone or i will get this reward so what is my reward and our reward if we're going to do this for 29 days 30 days man sama ramadana imana wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has promised in a sahih al hadith in bukhari and sahih al bukhari and many other books man sama ramadana iman wa ihtisaba a person who fasts during the month of ramadan with iman iman means only for the pleasure of allah only for allah and taking the spirituality of ramadan in the heart wa ihtisaba and he or she has full yaqeen and conviction that allah will reward that allah will forgive all your sins so promise number one all your sins all your sins promise number two a person who will perform the fast of ramadan correctly with the full spirituality allah will honor him with a door called babu rayyan in jannah yes so people will be entering jannah from different doors different doors different doors there's a door called in jannah babu rayyan vip door specifically exclusively for those people who have fasted for the sake and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make us amongst those, inshallah ta'ala, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And lastly, lastly, Laylatul Qadr. Benefit is, if we worship Allah in Laylatul Qadr, then it will be as we have worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for over thousands of months. What great, what great deal and agreement, and what great reward could have been for me and you, my brothers and sisters in Islam. So let's not waste this beautiful opportunity that Allah is giving us during this Ramadan of 2020 or 1441 that we're going to be isolated in lockdown and social distancing because Ramadan is not confined to the masjid as I mentioned. This is a time in which we can achieve a lot. We can achieve so much. This is the time that a person can reform and rectify and, uh, and work in, in many uh, aspects of deen and sharia. Indeed, I will say, indeed, have some time of your life on a daily basis that you will be given for any halaqa, any webinars, uh, any courses, that's fine. But also have a spiritual reformation plan, yeah? Not just 24-7 of webinars listening. Mashallah, is very good that we listen to talks and webinars and scholars. Alhamdulillah, this is very good. I'm not denying that. But also have a spiritual time for yourself with Allah only. You and Allah. A time which is between you and Allah. That's it. So don't be too much uh, engaged and spend majority of your time with this webinar, this course, this class. It's good. We're learning. But have a time in your day, in your night that you are giving to Allah. Just you and Allah. That's it. You and Allah. It's just you and Allah. You, your family and Allah. Give that time also. Because that is more important. Yeah. The webinar will give you some 
spirituality okay and the classes the courses will give you some spirituality but when you have that uh, unique connection with Allah and a one-to-one -one spirituality with Allah that is a different taste that is a totally different taste Wallahi, that is that tastes differently when is somebody giving you their food yeah tastes differently when we cook our own food at home that tastes differently that is a totally different taste we will eat outside because we want to socialize but when we eat at home from our mothers sisters and spouses cooking that taste generates a different uh, a different uh, maza and, and a different uh, enjoyment in our life isn't it so do not waste the opportunity do not waste the opportunity may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all the ability inshallah ta'ala to make this ramadan as profitable one a spiritual one wherever you are in the world remember ramadan is for allah it's not to do with lockdown isolation so just have your focus that i'm doing it for allah i'm not doing anyone else may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this ramadan a spiritual reformation inshallah ta'ala for all of us inshallah ta'ala may we pray and make dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take away any diseases any illness any COVID-19 or coronavirus, uh, coronavirus or any kind of virus and diseases we, uh, the, the world and the Ummah and humanity are with affected and uh, afflicted and, uh, with May Allah remove it from the Muslim Ummah inshallah ta'ala May Allah grant them cure May Allah grant them all shifa and good health and those who have passed away due to any cause May Allah grant them Jannah elevate the status forgive the shortcomings Allah make the Qabr and the grave a means of success and a means of nur and illumination inshallah ta'ala and protect them from the punishment of the qadr and the grave make this ramadan be a spiritual reformation for